Welcome to my video on soccer tactical periodization made simple. What I attempted to do in this video is make the coaching concept, the coaching theory of soccer tactical periodization into simple layman's terms. This is the system that Jose Mourinho uses, Andre Villaboros, Brendan Rodgers. Um, in this video, I break it down for you and give you a sample training session as well. This is my new book. It's available on Amazon.com. And of course, check out my blog at CoachDiBernardo.com. One of the first things to understand about tactical periodization is the four moments of the game, which are on offensive transition, offensive organization, defensive transition, and defensive organization. These four moments of the game are called the game cycle. And as you can see by the, the image here, I go over and explain it. But in every training session, the idea of tactical periodization is to teach towards a game model. So when you're teaching towards a specific game model, which is the way you want your team to play, you will make reference to these four moments of the game continuously in your training sessions. And even if you're working on just one of them, say offensive organization, you will overlap from offensive organization to defensive transition, defensive organization, and obviously back to offensive transition uh, during your training session, even though offensive organization may be your main focus of the day. This slide shows a standard Morse cycle of seven days. Now the cycles can be longer or shorter. It's basically just a Morse cycle is from one match to the next match, how you're gonna plan out training. So what this slide shows is a seven day cycle and how the training is planned out over those seven days. The intensity levels obviously are gonna be different on each one of those seven days. The principles the, the of what you're gonna be working on in practice are gonna be different. Everything is going to relate back to the game model. So training, your training model equals your game model. Exactly how you're gonna play even though if you break down into small groups, into small units, into sectors of your team, it all relates to directly how you're going to play your 11v11 game, which is your style of play, your philosophy of play. This chart here even shows the sectors of the field that you might use uh, for the intensity levels that go with each one of those days so you're ready for the match on Sunday. I'm going to take you through a sample training session. If this was a seven-day cycle in tactical periodization, this would be on a Wednesday, which would be actually the second day of training. We're going to train the principles and sub-principles of defensive organization. However, I would start the day in usually a rondo activity or a small keep away or possession game. This is a 10v2 one-touch game in a 10 by 10 yard grid that we would start training with. Next exercise uh, that we lead into for the defensive organization training is just simply pressure cover balance. The team in the middle, um, the guy pressuring the ball is the pressuring player. The two other players to the right and left are the covering players and the fourth player all the way out uh, on the left hand side is the balance player. This is just getting good defensive shape as one unit. This represents the back four. Building on the back four we now have added six against four so the back four can work as one unit just like they would in the actual game model against six players who are attacking goal. If the back four wins the ball, they can play it to a target player. This is the exact way that they play in our actual formation and game model. Now we progress to the back line of four plus two central defensive center midfielders who operate as a screen not allowing balls to be played into the forward's feet, screening the two center backs. This is exactly how we play in our regular formation and our game model. Um, this training builds upon the back four by themselves in the exercise before. If the six players win the ball, they get it out to a target player. Now we're progressing to an actual game situation with two lines of four, a midfield line and a back four, a defensive back four. We put in a line of confrontation, which the teams cannot go above. Um, this is very realistic to the way we play in our game model as well. And this ties together all the ideas that we were working on from the beginning of practice. However, since Wednesday is a medium intensity day, the size of the field and the work to rest ratio has to be monitored. So they are just working at a medium workload uh, for that Wednesday because the players are not yet fully recovered from the match on Sunday. 
soccer tactical periodization is a large topic. Sometimes it's tough to grasp with all the fancy terms and so forth. But at the end of the day, I really, really like this theory, this coaching method. It helps organize and structure your training sessions. It helps you keep focused and concentrated on the task at hand, which is getting the players to understand what you're training on a daily basis and how exactly that relates into the game model, the 11 v 11 game that you're going to play on the weekend and your style and philosophy of play that you as the coach implement on your team. It makes you as a coach kind of look at the bigger picture, including getting your team best prepared physically, emotionally, and mentally for that game, whether it's on the weekend or during the week, because you will plan out the practices, the size of the grid, the intensity level, the, the, the total workload of the day, um, the sub-principles, the principles. You'll break down the four moments of the game and make sure that the players understand the four moments of the game and how that relates every day into your training. So when they get on the field, they're going to start to almost think as coaches as well as players. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out my blog as well, coachdebernardo.com, and have a good day.